Hi everybody, this is Bob with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at Apple Loops and how to transpose them to match your chord changes in your song. We'll start here by going over and opening the Loop Browser. And I just, uh, I just typed in that I'm looking for a mandolin for my song here. Now what I have pulled up here is just a, a country song that I'm working on. And I want to see what it's going to sound like if I put a mandolin in there. But first, a little bit about the Apple Loops. There are two types. There's audio, and then, and they're all in blue. And then we have green ones. So what's the difference? The green ones are software instrument loops, which contain MIDI data. So let me click on one here. That's how you preview it. And then you just take it, and you drag it, and you drop it in. Now, if it's green, you have to drag it into a MIDI track for it to display the MIDI data. Of course, it'll play, but to display it, you can just double click on it and it'll pull up a piano roll. And you have a lot of flexibility here. You can edit every one of these events. So I'm not going to focus too much on that today because that's kind of a no brainer. Now, if you take those uh, software instrument loops and take this MIDI data that you have here and pull it down into an audio track. I have an audio track selected here. It's going to convert it to audio data. So now if I double click on it, it just pulls up the waveform. And so I cannot edit this the same way that I edit MIDI data. If I take an audio loop and I put it down on an audio track, obviously it's going to be a waveform. If I try to put it in a MIDI track, it's going to say not an audio track. So you can't drop it in there. Just to summarize real quickly, you can take a software instrument track and put it on a MIDI track or an audio track. It'll convert the software to audio, but you can't take an audio loop and put it on a software track. Okay, let me play you the section of the song that I want to put um, this mandolin in. Let me play a few bars of it. So this is just a uh, country song with a little shuffle beat here, and I just soloed up the acoustic guitar and the bass guitar so you can hear what's going on. Now I'm going to go back to my mandolin, and this is the mandolin that I want to put in this section of the song, number 11 here. So I just click on it to preview it. I have it in the song key. Here's the volume here. Now I could actually hit play and uh, have this play uh, along with it so I could audition it. But I already know I want this one. Uh, a couple of things to note here. This was originally recorded in the key of E at 100 beats per minute. My song is in the key of C, and it automatically transposed this audio to my, uh, to my song key. So it just does this uh, automatically. But you want to make sure that you, in your global tracks up here, that if you go to your key signature, you want to go over here and look and see what key you're playing in. So you just, you just type this into the correct key. I've already done that. So I'm going to start right here, measure 53. And I'm going to take this mandolin and just drag and drop it, and I have to put it on an audio track. By the way, if I take these loops and just pull it into a blank area, uh, where there's nothing, it'll automatically create a track for me and it'll make it appropriate to the loop I pulled in. So it'll make it an audio track or a software instrument track. My song is playing one, four, one, four, and then it plays a couple bars of one and then five. Now, if you're not familiar with the uh, number system, this is called the Nashville number system. And it's basically a method of denoting the scale degree on which these chords are built. So if we number them, since our seven notes in a scale, they would be numbered one through seven. Um, number one is the root chord. And so in my case, I'm playing in the key of C. So number one would be I'm playing a C chord and then four would be F and, five, and the five would be G. So just go check that out. Um, you can Google Nashville number system to get more information on that. But that's how I'm going to refer to this as I'm, uh, as I'm doing this. So um, I know this loop here, when I played it, I can hear it's one and then four. 
There's the change. So it'll loop that forever. One, four, one, four. So my song plays, uh, this first bar is one, and then the second bar is four. And then it does that again. So I'm just going to make a copy of it and put it right here. And then it does that again. Now let's listen to that. Okay, so there the mandolin's changing to the four, but the the uh, the chord progression didn't change. It stayed on the one. So since the first half of this loop is one, the second half is four. I just need to get rid of the second half, and just make a copy of the one here again. And so now that should play correctly. Let me try that. So that's perfect. Now here's the challenge. The next thing that's going to happen, it goes from the one to a five for the turnaround right here. I don't have any Apple loops over here that are playing the five. It's all one and four. So the best way to do this is to find something that's close. What's closest to the five chord is the four, which is the second half of this loop. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take this over here. And remember, this was one, four. So I'm going to cut out the first half. And now this is four, but I need to make it five right here. How do we transpose that from four to five? It needs to go up two half steps, right? One whole step. So I can go up to the global tracks and if I right click here, I can show transposition. But this globally changes the key of the entire song. I don't really want to do that because it would change my other loops. It would change my other MIDI data, anything that can be transposed. So that's not the answer. Let's see if I go over here and if you notice this is an audio track now. If I go over here, I have transpose on here. The only reason I have transpose on this audio track is because it's transposable, if you will, because I got it from the Apple Loops library. If I go up to where I played the Taylor acoustic guitar, you notice the transpose feature is dashed out. I can't transpose what I played. I can transpose MIDI data it's there. There's my bass guitar that I played in some MIDI notes. You can see I do that. But, and I can transpose Apple loops. So that's how I want to do that. But if I do that now, I need to go up two half steps, right? If I do that, it transposed the whole track. I don't want to do that. So let me take that back down. So what I need to do is select this, just this region and notice now I can just transpose that region. If I select this region, it stayed on zero. So let's see how that does. I'll just play the measure before it. So perfect. It went right to the, to the five. Now my next measure is playing the same chord, so I need to copy this again. And now my song starts over, or this part of the course this section starts over so I'm gonna take the whole thing copy and paste it and put it here and that completes the mandolin section in my course let's take a listen so there you go it's just going to repeat that again so now I'm going to take all of my regions that I've edited here and select them all. And I'm going to bounce this down and uh, we'll let it render and then uh, I'll be right back. So there you go. Now I have a new audio file that's uh, been created. And um, I can turn that one off. I'll turn this one on. Now you can see it's bounced down into one region. So now I can just take this and copy and paste it into the next course if I like. So it's nice and clean and it's manageable. Okay, so let's just play our newly recorded audio file and see how it plays.
Now, one thing about the audio loops, all of the audio loops are in a major key. So if you need an A minor, you're out of luck because when you're transposing, you're just transposing the whole chord up and down the scale. So if I take, um, if I take a C and I move it up a whole step, it just goes from that C major chord to a D major chord. Well, if I needed that to be a D minor, so it's diatonic within that C scale, that's really not possible here. So your best bet there is to look for a software instrument track, because again, you can double click on those, go to the piano roll. Now you can take your major third and make that a minor chord by just moving it down a half step. And so you go from a major third to a minor third, and there you go, your minor chord. So it's helpful to have a little music theory to manipulate this uh, data. So there you have it, a great way to take audio Apple loops and transpose them to match the chord changes in your song. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.